Hi folks, Mike the Car Guy here, and I'd like to share with you an experience that I think highlights why I don't believe the competition for your dealership's service drive or quick lane or quick lube is coming from the dealership across town. I think it's coming from right around the block and you may not even be aware of it, or you're not taking it seriously. I started in the car business 30 years as a tune-up and drivability tech. And after four years of turning wrenches, when I got into sales, I still felt a real connection with the service department. And I've always been kind of an elitist when it comes to getting your vehicle service. I've always preached to everyone that I know, you got to take it to the dealership, factory trained technicians, factory parts. They get the, the training that's specific to your vehicle. They're not working on just a generic blend of all the cars that are available on the road where they're not able to specify technologies and such. And, and I've preached it pretty much my whole life. And I'm really, really happy to see the increase in attention towards dealership fixed ops departments that we've seen in the last couple of years. Companies like uh, Fixed Ops Digital uh, doing some incredible advertising for, for dealership service departments to really get them the attention that they deserve. The Fixed Ops Roundtables that are hosted online, I've participated in many of them and I, and I watch them constantly. And I'm just really happy to see the things that people are doing for, for service departments at dealerships. But I was at a service department recently um, on a dealer visit, and it was kind of a, a, a an eye-opener. Uh, I was waiting for the service manager to get freed up. He was talking to the factory rep, so I was just kind of hanging out. There was uh, two service advisors sitting at their desks, and uh, a lady pulled in with a vehicle, and she looked up, and on the, on the window it says, please remain in your car. So she did. And time went by, and it was probably only about five minutes. But in, in the life we live, five minutes can seem like a lifetime, as I'm sure you all know. So she finally got out of her car and came in and when she approached the door, you could see she was kind of hesitant. She didn't want to touch it. So she, she finally grabbed it with her pinky, opened it up and walked inside and immediately started looking around and you could tell she was looking for hand sanitizer. There wasn't any. So the service advisor finally looked up and he said, oh, can I help you? She goes, yeah, I need to get my car looked at. Um, do you have any hand sanitizer by any chance? And it was behind his, his screen on his desk. So he reluctantly grabbed it and put it out on the desk. And he goes, have you been here before? She says, no, this is my first time. We just bought the car for my sister, but I need to get it checked out. Um, and I wanted to bring it to, to a dealership um, because my husband said that's the best thing to do. So he said, well, um, do you know the VIN number of your vehicle? And she was like, um, what is that? And he goes, well, that's kind of why we like you to wait in your car so I can come out and get the information that I need off your vehicle. Can I get your key? And he walked out and luckily the service manager freed up before I had to sit there and painfully watch it get any worse. But we can all kind of assess where it was going and, and kind of point out the flaws in it. I'm not here to nitpick that dealership. I'm just kind of saying that for me, it was an eye opener because I hadn't really stopped to look at it from a customer's point of view in a long, long time. Very next day, I had to get my own vehicle serviced and I chose to, to do it at one of the dealerships I was visiting, keep the business in, in the family, right? So I was at a Honda dealership in the, the South Bay in Southern California, exact opposite situation. Pull in, young man comes out with a smile, greets me, finds out what I'm there for, scans a vehicle. I'm in and out, uh, literally. By the time he got done getting my name and, and address information, the porter took the vehicle. He told him to get it over to Quick Lube. We signed at the desk. Everything was great. I did my dealer visit. When I came out, vehicles washed up, ready for me to go with a smile. You're on the road. And as I was driving away, I was thinking to myself, that's how it should be. That's why dealerships are superior to everything else. That's the kind of visit that everyone should get because then they'd never go anyplace else but a dealership. The story doesn't end there. My father-in-law is a car guy, been a car guy for most of his 80 years, has a, an Explorer that he's very proud of. It's lowered, cap back exhaust, got a K&N. And, and for an older guy, he's, he's got a pretty much of a hot rod as far as a truck goes, and he takes good care of it. He washes it every week, gets the oil change at 3,500, no matter how many times I tell him you don't need to get it at 3,500 miles. You can go as high as five, maybe even 6,000 miles, not hearing it. He gets it done like clockwork. Well, when things went crazy earlier in the year in March, his truck needed a, an oil change. And he was asking me, you know, can, can I go get an oil change? And I was like, mm, no, I don't think you should. I think we'll wait a little while. We're, we're not driving around like we used to. It, it can wait. After six months of putting him off politely, he finally said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to go get the oil change. I found this place over across town that'll uh, do a touchless oil change. You stay in your car. They don't contact you. I'm going to go. You can't stop me. I said, well, I know I can't stop you per se, but 
at least let me go with you. Uh, that way you can sit in the passenger side and I'll feel a little more comfortable about the situation. So we set out an early Saturday morning, pull up to the, the facility. Gentleman guides us in uh, over the pit. Young lady standing next to the vehicle says, can I get you to open the door? Scans the van, all the information comes up on a big screen that's that's right near the, uh, the driver's side window. She starts going over all the things that are gonna be done, gets my name, address, phone number, email address, and then she says, make sure the number you give me is a cell phone because I'm gonna be sending you the information so that you don't even have to touch the, the credit card machine. We'll do it all on, on your phone. And I'm thinking, okay, mobile bill pay. Most dealerships have that, I'm not impressed. A young man starts calling off passenger side front 36 passenger side rear 36 and he's calling off everything as he goes around the vehicle topping off windshield wiper fluid topped off antifreeze check the battery load and he's just calling it off and my father-in-law is starting to get excited he's like this is like a nascar pit stop i can't believe this this is exciting i'm a little jaded when it comes to that kind of stuff i've been doing this my whole life so i was like it's not that big a deal pop don't worry about it but I gotta tell you, by the end of the experience, when she says, okay, I'm gonna send the uh, information to your phone, send it to the phone, she goes, go ahead and put your, your uh, credit card information, and then you can just sign right there on the phone. I was like, okay, no one's contacting, no touching, 20 minutes, in and out. Obviously, dealerships can't have a pit available readily, or they can't change their whole operation and I'm not saying that and I'm not trying to be a commercial for the the little Jiffy Lube, Valvoline, quick service places that are all over the place. All I'm saying is those are the real threat to your dealership's service drive. Instead of focusing on ABC Motors across town, we need really need to look at the little facilities and see why there's a line outside of them every time I drive by one. They do a great job. You gotta at least be willing to admit that there is the, the ability for these folks to do as good a job, maybe even provide a little bit better customer service. And I'm not trying to, to tell you how to run your business at all. I'm suggesting things that can help you be successful though. When you see your customers looking around for sanitizer because they're concerned, we gotta at least acknowledge those concerns as valid. How the customer feels is how they feel. It doesn't matter what we believe. I've had dealerships tell me, go ahead and take off your mask. We don't believe in that BS anyways. I'm leaving my mask on and that's my choice. Customers may not feel comfortable touching services. When I was at the, the Honda dealership in the South Bay, he said, hey, if you're gonna have a seat in the service lounge, let me just rest assured and, and let you know that our porters go through there every few minutes that when they see someone get up, they wipe down the chair, they wipe down the table, they wipe down all the flat services in there. Uh, and even if there's no one in there, they do it on a regular basis about every 15, 20 minutes. And I just thought that was a real nice way to, to help me feel at ease about being in that facility. And those are the kind of things that make a huge difference. If you're gonna have doorways without hand sanitizer clear and, and available for customers, that increases their anxiety. That means, that could mean that they don't wanna be there, that they don't wanna spend time there. They just wanna get in and get out. If, if you're gonna have sanitizer on a desk, make sure that it's where the customer can get to it not where the employee has it stashed off to the side. And, and they're obviously putting hand sanitizer on every few minutes. Customers have that same concern. So it's just something that I was really kind of took a step back and, and looked at it a different way. Uh, am I going to go back to that Valvoline quick lube again? Probably not. But I think that it's worth looking at. And if I was a used car manager right now, uh, or if I was talking with a used car manager or service manager, I would tell them, you know what, the next time you get a trade that the uh, doesn't need much, just needs a quick oil change. You could wash it and put it on the front line. Take 50 bucks out of petty cash or, or out of your own pocket. It's worth the investment. Go to one of these little local service centers and see what it's all about. See what's going on. See if you can learn anything. See if you can take a different approach instead of just doing it the same way. The car business, as you know, is famous for forcing customers to do things the way they want. Whether it's up front in the sales department, you're going to buy a car the way we want to sell a car. Or it's in the service drive. Let's take a little bit more customer-focused approach. The consumer experience is a buzzword, and, and it's all over the place. But what are we really doing about it? What does it mean to our business? Just trying to, to share some thoughts that I think may spark some conversation, at least in your dealership. If you're a GM watching it, talk to your service manager. Ask him. Walk through your own dealership. See where the, the sanitizers are. See what the procedures are. If you're going to put a notice on your website that we're aware of COVID and we're keeping your safety at the forefront of our business, you gotta follow through, you really do, because if the customers come in and they see a disconnect between what they saw online that you're saying you're gonna do and what's really happening, you're not gonna get a second chance with those folks.
I'm Mike the Car Guy. Love to talk to you more about it anytime. Hope you're having a great day. Stay safe.